What's up guys? So on this video here, we're gonna be working on Christian's car. It's a Pro Charger F1A car. It's got uh, Boss, ID 1000s, Pro Charger F1A. I don't know what kind of boost it's gonna be on, but it's got a wastegate setup. So this will be my first time guys showing you, you know, kind of uh, the packs and stuff. People sell a kit called a torque booster. Uh, it's basically just you use a wastegate and you pull it down so that you can get it to come into boost faster and then bleed it off up top. It's not very effective for the top end, but definitely works really good for drivability around town whenever these uh, centrifugals, they don't make a whole lot of torque down low. So it's kind of bridge that gap a little bit, kind of make it a little bit more enjoyable on the street down low. Um, this car here come to me for a tune and an oil change. And very quickly I found they, they missed a couple of things. We're gonna tidy them up fix them up for them, get these guys squared away, get them a fresh tune with Juggernaut. They've already sent us a base file. The car did start up and drive into the garage. It's surging on the base file. They said that uh, could be the math placement. So apparently when they do the stock math location for the Pro Charger kit, which puts the math in the intercooler, it can cause them to have a little bit of uh, a trouble reading that stuff correctly. So we may have to play around with the files a little bit, but before we can do that, we did find missing clamps, loose clamps, not properly installed clamps. I mean, it's just a bunch of like little issues that could potentially cause a lot of tunability problems that we're just gonna clean up and make sure that this car is safe and responsible for Mustang week. So these guys are also going down with us. This car should be an absolute blast. Even on eight, nine pounds, this car should probably make 560, 570 wheels, 600. So it should be a really fun car to daily drive. Definitely going to be a blast down there. These things are really loud. This, this blower is significantly louder than most other pro chargers that you will daily drive or hear. See, my car had this same one on it, and I absolutely loved it. Love how obnoxious and loud it is. So without any more of that, we are going to get right into fixing these little odds and ends, getting this thing data logged, and we will do some driving videos and stuff as well. And hopefully everything goes smooth. I didn't install this one. I'm just gonna tidy it up and make sure everything goes smooth. All right, so we now have got the intercooler tightened up. We've got the bypass valve on, wastegate back on. Every bit of piping was redone. I pulled everything off, retightened all the clamps, did them all over. So now we've got a good fit up. Things have been spun around to where they actually line up correctly. This one was bound up in the valve cover. So had a bunch of like little things like that that go a million miles over the top once they're all said and done. As you can see, I had this, this was actually a piece of aluminum, that one. It was that piece of aluminum and that straight is what was making this bend. And as you can see, this has got some uh, pretty wonky edges. That's gonna lead to some airflow restrictions and, and uh, cause the air to not mix correctly. So we've got a smooth coupler on it, trimmed it down and got it situated. Um, missed the trimming stuff, my phone died, so. We just went ahead and threw it all back together though. So now we just gotta get the car up, change the oil, do a general check over. I've done check the tires, suspension, brakes and stuff like that. Everything seems to be good, minus a little bit of rust uh, on the brakes and stuff, but that's just from it's sitting out in the weather. And I'm just checking all these clamps and making sure everything seems to be tip top. We're gonna have this thing ready to go to Mustang week in, uh, well, a few minutes. It'll be pretty much be ready, but we're waiting on the tune. I gotta do uh, data log tonight get that to them and then we start the tuning process on this car and hopefully three or four days we should be completely done it might take us just a little bit they said that uh with the mass airflow being down here as i mentioned earlier it can cause some screwy readings so hopefully we get a good clean reading on this thing pretty quickly 
All right, I think it's like 3.30 in the morning or something right now. I am beat. However, this is one more car down, one more to go before I can jump onto my own, I believe, I think, minus the tuning. Granted, we still gotta tune Paul's car, we still gotta tune this one. I'm gonna be doing all the data logging and tuning on this car as well as Paul's car. So when I say tuning, I mean, I drive the car, I do all the data logs, I do all the street tuning, drivability, I do all that stuff, right? But I don't do it myself. I data log it, I send it to somebody. Juggernaut Power in Connecticut, they're the guys that end up doing all my tuning. I'm a dealer for them. They are the best of the best. That's why I picked them to be a dealer for because I requested, I was like, hey, can I be a dealer for you guys? You guys are awesome, you guys rock. I wanna be representative of you guys. So I'm really happy to have those guys along with me. They're gonna be tuning this car and the other one and they are gonna be top notch. They're gonna run fantastic. I already know it in advance. Now again, I think it's the third time I'm saying this, and the math curve stuff. So the car's a little funky on first startup. Uh, you can blip the throttle and then it'll kind of mellow out and, and chill. So hopefully I can get him a good log. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and get the car all the way off the rack and then go ahead and get the laptop hooked up to it and get our first idle log. So it's just gonna idle for, I'm gonna back it out, but it's gonna idle for um, two, three minutes. Five, I think five minutes actually. So we just gotta let it sit there and idle. Let it do its thing, let it correct. That way he can have the information he needs for tomorrow morning. Hopefully tomorrow we can get two or three logs back and forth between these guys, bearing their schedules, allowing it. So let's get this done and go home. What's up guys? So 
now we're out here in Christian's car once again uh, doing some data logging. So we got the, uh, the idle log done yesterday and let this car just run and make sure everything was doing pretty good. We finally got the math corrections figured out. This thing seems to be doing really, really well. So now we're just going on a normal drive, no boost whatsoever. We're just kind of cruising around, listening to it and making sure everything is going to be safe and functioning. Make sure that, uh, you know, as, as you know, I fixed the intercooler piping stuff, right? I did a bunch of work on that. However, I didn't actually do any other work to the car. So we're making sure that we don't have any oil leaks, coolant leaks, no overheating issues, nothing like that. Make sure everything seems to be working kosher and, and together in harmony like it's supposed to. So as of right this minute, the car seems to be doing really, really well. Um, just cruising, like I said. But I did want to take a minute to say that, uh, God, I miss my Pro Charger so bad. My car had an F1A on it, and I had it from 2016 to 2020 when I sold the car. And, uh, man, there's just nothing like it. There's nothing like the sound of a big Pro Charger. So you can probably hear it whining in the background. We're at 1500 RPM, just cruising down the road at 30 mile an hour. And it's just, it's so, so loud and I, I love it. I love it so much. It's got the big red race valve. Um, you know, the, the F1A is a 540 to one gear ratio. And you know, like Paul's D1X, for example, it is a 410 to one gear ratio. So although that blower after yesterday is making significantly more power than this car by like not a small margin <laughs> by, by a lot that car is making some serious steam it's still not quite as loud as this one probably based solely off of like the step up ratio and stuff like that now this one also has a bigger i think it's a bigger diameter uh, wheel in it and stuff like that so it's obviously it's also moving a lot of air down low as well as up top you know there's a lot of science that goes into the, how the wheels are designed and it's way above my pay grade but what i do know is that f1s make beautiful noises so i'm actually going to roll the window down here for a second make sure we don't get any, i hope we don't get any wind noise but i want you to be able to hear just how loud this blower is say you're riding around town you know you don't want it to be so loud you know you can lug it down a little bit you know we're around 1500 rpm right now and it's you know the gear winds there but it's not like making astronomical noises this thing sounds like a jet airplane i was actually pretty sure that somebody drove by the shop last night i thought somebody was still in this thing a uh, street sweeper came by and uh, it sounds just like one so i mean it's it is pretty obnoxious from time to time However, in my experience, I've never ran into an opportunity when I did not love being obnoxious. Like, I'm gonna lay a scenario out for you. Say you're at Mustang week, right? Everybody's cruising the strip. There can be a 1500 horsepower twin turbo car riding the strip behind you. Nobody's gonna look at it. They're all gonna stare at your 580 horsepower Pro Charger F1 Coyote car that comes down the street sounding like somebody's gonna have to get blown off their feet. So nobody, nobody cares about your fast twin turbo car when it sounds like this because people that aren't car people, they're not going to know that car makes 1500 horsepower. In fact, most car people ain't even going to know it makes 1500 horsepower just for the fact of it's just cruising around town. It's quiet. It sounds normal. This thing sounds like a dang race car. So that's, that's my reasoning for why I like them. Uh, not only that, they're extremely reliable. They don't really have any issues. They've got their own self-contained fueling. <clears throat> sorry self-contained oiling system meaning if your engine was to blow up it doesn't send metal and trash through your supercharger like turbos do because the turbo when it you know it sends engine oil through it engine oil is contaminated so is your turbos so i hate to lose a three or four thousand dollar turbo to uh, a blown motor as well as so there is that is also um 
this blower setup does not make very much torque. So like driving around town, you kind of feel it down low. It doesn't have the oomph that a, that a positive displacement like a Whipple or something like that would have. However, what it makes, what it doesn't have on the bottom end, I promise you this thing makes up for on the top end. It pulls so hard. And like where a blower falls off, this thing's still pulling like crazy. So, but I mean like right there is an example of me pulling out in second gear. It pulls out just fine. All right, so I did not end up getting any more videos of the rest of Christian's log. Everything went great. The tuning was perfect. The car's spot on. Uh, we're actually here at Mustang Leaf in the house now. And the uh, car's done great. We drove it around yesterday, I think the day before. So all is well. That car should be making somewhere around 600 wheel. On the wastegate setup, should be around eight pounds. I can't really verify that because we never had a boost gauge put in there. But uh, that's it, man. I, I just want to take this time to appreciate Juggernaut Power and John Bowen with uh, with them and getting us taken care of. He definitely got this car dialed in fast and effectively. This car is really, really stout. It runs really good. This guy has got it dialed in. So customers happy, we're happy, and everything in general it's just been fantastic with these guys again if anybody's interested in getting their car tuned with them you can holler at me or them yourself and we can get you taken care of if you need me to help you get the data log process and everything done it's not exactly hard but it is one of the things that takes a little while to get the hang of the, the software live wire is a little bit of a tricky booger to use sometimes but we've got it down to science now so or if you just don't have a laptop and don't have the ability to do it yourself you can let us know. We'll be more than happy to help take care of it if you're local or local-ish enough. Uh, like always, make better choices. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back with more. I've got some other videos and stuff to get edited. As, you, as I said, I am here at Mustang Week now trying to get all this editing done. It has been a crazy week, and I'll dive more into that later in the next videos. Catch you guys next time.